Good morning, I'm on site here at Embedded World 2022 and joining me today is Mark from Microchip. Now Mark is the Business Development Manager for SIC Power Solutions in the EMA region and today we're going to be talking about Microchip's uh, silicon carbide solutions and what makes the company stand out from the crowd. So thank you very much for joining me today Mark. And um, before we get started, can you just give us a brief overview of silicon carbide technology and the benefits that it offers designers? Sure, I can do, yeah. But uh, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here on the real Embedded World show, not a virtual one, a real one. So that is really pretty nice. Yes. And um, yeah, and uh, thank you all for, for listening to us here. Um, it's uh, pretty nice. So yeah, silicon carbide versus uh, silicon, I think that was your question. Yep. Um, um, perhaps uh, most of the um, power engineers uh, do know the differences in the meantime, so everybody learned it over the last 10 years. So silicon carbide is a more robust technology. It has a, um, um, it's a wide band cap technology, so it, it means um, it had a, has a wider band cap than, uh, than uh, silicon technologies, mm -hmm. and that makes the product more robust, and uh, you can um, create um, smaller dyes, so smaller, smaller um, 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 products at the end. And I think um, under the line, what um, does it give an advantage to the customer in the application? So um, you can switch it mu much faster. Yeah. You have much less um, losses, especially switching losses, turn off losses. They are 70% less than classical IGBTs. And, um, and so that gives a lot of advantages. So if I can switch faster, I can make um, things smaller, especially those passive components, mm -hmm. the capacitors, the inductors, transformers, and so on can get smaller. Yeah. And because of the better terminal behavior, you can also make the heat sink smaller. So your overall system gets smaller, you switch it faster, perhaps you get out of the audio noise range, and that are some of the advantages silicon carbide uh, gives to um, the customers. Mm -hmm. What is important to note, I would say, is um, that silicon carbide makes sense with voltages more than 400, 500, 600 volt. Right. It doesn't make sense um, with 100 volts or so. And so we see many applications in the 400 volt and plus uh, um, 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 range. And um, so, but I think we come to that point later yes, on, yeah? Really. No, <laughs> okay. thank you for that. Um, yeah, so let's talk about your SIC power solutions. What exactly do these solutions include? Okay, so it's a huge uh, range. So yeah. how much time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so first of all, <clears throat> Microchip um, is um, a, a, also a leading supplier in silicon carbide technologies. Perhaps not everyone uh, brings that together with our name. So we acquired Microsimi, which was formerly APT. So, and we have um, two, um, 20 years, more than 20 years of history with uh, silicon carbide and with uh, power electronics uh, at all. <clears throat> and um, the product range we do have, so we have silicon carbide uh, Schottky barrier diodes. We do have um, silicon carbide MOSFET technologies. We have the voltage range from 700 volt up to 3.3 kilovolt, which means um, 700 volt, um, 1200 volt, 1700 volt, and 3.3 kilovolt. 3.3 mm -hmm. kilovolt was uh, released, uh, I think, in April on the APEC um, show, and we are proud that we have the devices with the, with the highest current, so diodes with the highest current, up to 90 m, and with the lowest RDS on for the MOSFETs, which is uh, 25 milli ohm. Mm -hmm. So we, now we have really a wide, bright, broad spectrum of uh, silicon carbide offerings. Yeah. If you ask me what kind of products you have at the end, what can customers buy? at um, microchip so first of all for sure discrete devices so i have something here some just some examples of packages which i which i just found <coughs> on the way um, to this um, interview and so you see we have different kind of discrete devices in a to package in smd packages also in so sot 227 packages so also a broad uh, spectrum of different kind of packages and and more to come in uh, in the near future um, next to this, the customers, if they want to, they can also get buy, uh, dice from us, so right. pure dice, mm -hmm. so not packaged parts. If they want to build their own modules, or if the module manufacturer wants to use that, they can. Yeah. And uh, also here from 700 volt to 3.3 kilovolt. Um, and we also have um, power modules. So power modules, like you see here, I have just two examples. Uh, I think we have hundreds of modules. <laughs> just two examples, which I had into my pocket. and. Um, um, and um, so we can offer customers um, also power modules off the shelf, but we can also modify those modules. So if a customer wants to have something special, different color, I don't know what they, that they want to have or without a Schottky barrier diode or whatever, um, he can ask for that, mm -hmm. even for lower quantities. Yeah. And what we also can do, we can also create 100% custom modules, which is interesting also for the smaller volume customers. Mm -hmm. yeah, we have a low threshold for that and so 
if you have interest in, reach out to a microchip, to your next uh, microchip contact or your distribution contact and get in uh, discussion with us. Next to all the silicon carbide offerings, we also have digital gate drivers mm -hmm. for silicon carbide, which is something special. Um, which means um, compared to the classical analog drivers, we don't turn it on and off in one step, just with a different RG. Mm -hmm. um, we also we turn it on in steps and we turn it off in steps. And that helps for reducing the ringing and also um, finding the right balance um, between um, um, switching losses and, um, and, and the ringing, for example. And many more, so I don't, I don't have the time to discuss all the details, but just to give you a, an idea. Yeah, a nice okay. overview, fantastic range, <laughs> fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you support customers looking to adopt silicon carbide technology? Yeah, so um, what, we, what we see that some customers are still struggling with silicon carbide, they have experience with silicon, but it's a little bit different in driving and the behavior of the devices itself. And so we try to help our customers with adapting silicon carbide with ease, speed, and confidence. Mm -hmm. That is our slogan yeah. at the end. And how do we do that? So there are three things I think which are important, which is cost, time to market, and risk. And yeah. we try to reduce or, or lower everything. So in, in terms of cost, um, so lowering the system cost. And that can be done because our technology is very robust. We have a high ruggedness, high performance, Products. I can give you more details later, perhaps, if you have the time. Yeah. Um, but that leads to the point that you can get rid of some redundancy electronics, like free willing diodes or snubber electronics and, and some things else. And so, um, at the end, this also reduces your cost, the mm -hmm. overall system cost. Then I mentioned time to market. How can we support customers or engineers um, doing desi designs much faster? So first of all, we do have the intelligent gate drivers, which I just mentioned, which are programmable, flexible. That helps, and on the other hand, microchip is, you know microchip is a company who's doing everything. Mm -hmm. So especially microcontrollers, but also analog stuff and, and um, communication and so on and so on. So any power electronic, it's not just the power stage. It's also the control. It's also the auxiliary power for the system. It's communication, it's whatever. And microchip is a company who can offer everything, but also support everything. Mm -hmm. That means we can give the customer a complete comprehensive support in the TSS, we call it Total System Solution, TSS. And that helps the uh, engineers um, get it, getting ready with their design much, much faster than normal. And um, um, that was cost, um, time to market, and um, supply certainty is important, I think. Risk, to reduce the risk, and how do we do that? So we have strategies and investments done, um, which helps us um, having still good lead time, so our lead times are still in the range of 10, 10 to 20 weeks. In the current days, I think that's not normal. No. So we see much longer lead times, and we see a lot of customers coming also to us uh, regarding that, which is fine. Um, and, um, and how do we do that? So we have some good strategies, investments, and so on. And um, I think the most important points, we buy our raw material, right. epi, substrate, and so on, from independent suppliers, not from the competition. Mm -hmm. yeah, so we don't have a bottleneck there and we have a dual fab strategy. So we manufacture um, the, um, the, the products itself, the dyes itself in two different fabs. Mm -hmm. And so that gives us uh, supply certainty or the customer supply certainty. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds okay. like you've got a great support network there for the customers. Sorry? Sounds like you've got a great support network there for the customers, so that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, so how do your solutions help developers get their designs uh, to market um, quickly and efficiently? Yeah, I think what, what I already said is um, with the TSS uh, approach so that yeah. we can, we have long experience in digital control of um, power electronics, for yeah. example, with our DSPX, but also with FPGA. Mm -hmm. um, here we can help the customers in that um, um, perspective and also the, all the analog stuff, which is on and so on. And microchip is, has something unique compared to many, many other suppliers, which is we are non-commissioned sales force. Mm -hmm. That means for you or for the customer, it doesn't matter. So how are the guys yeah. paid? Yeah. But um, as we are non-commissioned um, Salesforce, we help each other worldwide. Mm -hmm. So if I need an expert from anywhere in the world, I get him, I, I, I get him for the customer to help the customer. If he has the experience in something and the customer needs that, I can support that. And that makes us also so unique. So we can offer really one-stop shop support at the end for the customers. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Um, so can you tell us about the markets that you serve with these solutions? <laughs> Nearly everywhere. A wide range. <laughs> it's already a wide range. So perhaps most people think about EV, e vehicles, yeah. um, which is a huge market for sure. But in the meantime, over the last couple of years, I saw so many different kind of customers, different kind of markets, applications, yeah. where silicon carbide is used. Yeah. I think um, 
I, I mentioned it in the beginning, so um, silicon carbide is always used when you have more than several hundred volt, 500 volt, whatever, and also a power, power level of um, three kilowatt or five kilowatt or even more megawatts. Yeah. And if you do that, if you have any kind of AC to DC, DC to AC, AC to AC, DC to AC, I don't know what I mentioned. <laughs> so all that kind of conversion, um, um, then um, the silicon carbide makes absolutely sense. As higher the uh, voltage, as better. And if you want to switch fast, also better. Yeah. Um, so um, what kind of markets do we see? <clears throat> so as mentioned, electric vehicles mm -hmm. for sure, but also EV charging, yeah. which is a huge market. So we need the infrastructure yeah. if we <laughs> decarbonize our world. And um, so um, EV charging is a big market for silicon carbide. Then we have a lot of different industrial applications, industrial heating, welding, laser technologies, all that stuff, uh, power supplies, industrial power supplies. Yeah. Um, are there PV market, for example, so renewable energy um, stuff. We see it in railway applications. Um, out of my head, <laughs> what else? So, so many, there are so many applications. What's nice is there are also applications which you would not guess they are. So um, classical flyback converter. Okay. So a flyback converter converts a high voltage to a very low voltage. Mm -hmm. um, and normally you have that in, uh, in 10 to 100 watt or so. Yeah. Not the normal range uh, for silicon carbide. Mm -hmm or normal area for silicon carbide. Um, but because of some technical background, I don't want to explain it here, okay. um, because of some technical background, if you have a high uh, input voltage, let's say 600 volt plus, um, then it makes absolutely sense to look into um, the high RDS on silicon carbide devices. Mm -hmm. That gives the customer um, a little bit more efficiency. Um, it could be cheaper at the end but it's also available, especially at Microchip. Yeah? Yeah. May I show you this one here? <laughs> <Fantastic>. <laughs> um, and, and so um, it could uh, help a lot of customers, and, and we see customers doing that. Yeah. And what we also see, which is interesting, um, which is not power conversion, but it's more protection. Okay. So um, solid state uh, breakers or so, so or e-fuses, some, some call it e-fuses. Um, here, our silicon carbide technology is uh, also perfect for doing that kind mm. of application, and we see a lot of demand in that yeah. too. Excellent. So, Sorry for a long answer. No, no, don't worry, that's <laughs> fine. Um, so let's focus on the EV market in particular. Um, so what demands are you seeing from the EV market and, and how are you looking to support them? Obviously you mentioned sort of the charges as well. So, yeah. you know, what work are you doing in that area? Yeah, um, so the, the demand is huge. Yeah. I can give you numbers <laughs> if, you, if you watch uh, that market study or that one. It's a little bit different, all the, but billions of pieces, I don't know. Yeah. So many, many, many. Yeah? So I think that is the biggest market at all. But as I said, industrial is also important and also EV charging, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Um, they are also huge. <clears throat> and um, there is one thing Microchip, I think, um, always tries to consider, even if the market of automotive is very, very huge and we address that also, we are also in that market yeah. for sure. We still try to find a good balance between the a good old partnership behaving um, industrial customers and all the other customers, mm -hmm. smaller volumes, and on the other side, the automotive guys. Yeah. Um, because um, we don't want to lose our industrial customers. We were, um, we, we, we grow up with all these smaller, medium-sized customers mm -hmm. over the last 30 years, and we also want to treat them well. So yeah. we find the balance, and therefore, as I said, we have some things in place um, which gives us um, gives us the ability to um, fulfill demand in the market. Mm. Yeah. Brilliant. Now you've mentioned it before, but um, Microchip describes itself as a one-stop system shop. So can you explain how this works, and again, the benefits that it provides? Yeah, so as, as, as I said, um, so we can support the customer in every aspect of the design. Yeah? If, it is the, uh, if it is the power stage, if it is the driving. Uh, yesterday we did a, a webinar with um, how to drive silicon carbide in the right way and yeah. what kind of challenges they could have and so on and so on. Um, <clears throat> and um, then we um, have the um, digital control. Most of the devices are controlled digitally in, mm -hmm. in the current days because it makes more sense. You can get um, most out of this. And, <clears throat> and so as a digital control, then the analog uh, measurement stuff and the auxiliary power for that and the communication, whatever it is, it, if it is wireless or wired, depends on the application, if it is CAN for automotive, for example, or any kind of Ethernet or single pair Ethernet or whatever it, it could be. Um, so many things we can support from the technical um, standpoint. And as I said, I get the support everywhere from the world if, if that is needed. So yeah. if a customer needs an expert, I can bring it uh, mm. into the discussion. Brilliant. Yeah. And what is it, do you think, that makes Microchip different from its competitors? From, uh, for uh, for, uh, different for uh, in compet competitors? Yeah, what makes you unique? <laughs> <laughs> so first of all, as I said, the technology, I go more in deep uh, later here, um, but 
I don't want to forget to mention that Microchip as a company is also unique. Yeah. Um, not just the non-commissioned Salesforce, but also the values Microchip has. So we have guiding values, which are very um, human-like, and so we want to treat our customers well, for sure, every, everyone wants to, do, yeah. wants to do that. We do have a non-end-of-life policy. We try to not end-of-life products. We cannot give a guarantee to customers, but it is our, it's in our heart. Yeah. So longevity of the product, um, technical support, as I mentioned, um, and the comprehensive support, especially, and, um, and many more things as a company, but I think that would take too long to discuss it here. Um, from the technology, I think I, I should mention the um, robustness of the products, yeah. because that's important. We see in different kind of round tables that the reliability is important. It's an important topic, which was not considered so far in the, in the, in the past, mm -hmm. um, but we see it more and more, and it's important. So what, what, um, what, 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 what parts of um, reliability um, do we, um, support here well. So first of all, gate oxide. Yeah. So I think that is key that you have really a stable, good gate oxide. And we can show that, for, for example, that the threshold stays stable over a long time and in a high temperature. So HTGB test um, shows that um, we have really just a little, little change, less than 60 millivolts, mm -hmm. uh, over 1,000 hours, 175 degrees, etc. Um, in a static um, a situation, but also in a dynamic situation, yeah, which is the normal one you have in the system at the mm -hmm. end. Um, then the lifetime of the gate oxide. We calculated it, we can't measure it 100% because uh, we don't live 100 years, so I <laughs> wouldn't see it anymore. Um, but nevertheless, so um, um, there are systems um, to calculate that and we run uh, in up to 100 years and more, far more than 100 years. Brilliant, that yeah. is something what we can show to the customer. So um, then body diode stability. Um, that's not always the case, but at Microchip is the case. So there was the Ohio State University who tested our devices and also others. I, mm -hmm. I don't want to say anything bad about the others. They are also other good guys. Um, but nevertheless, our technology has most stable body diode technology. Yeah. That means um, you can use a body diode in the application. Perhaps it has a, a little bit higher VF um, compared to an external Schottky barrier diode. Yeah. But if that is okay, if those, those losses are okay, then you can use a body diode. You mm -hmm. still can use an external for, for, uh, um, forward um, willing diode. That is, um, but if that is not needed, you can get rid of that. It works, it's fine, it's stable, mm -hmm. 100%, you can use it. That also uh, lowers the system cost. Um, then Avalanche capability, my yeah. favorite. So Avalanche um, 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 stuff, uh, we have tests done with repeated Avalanche uh, capability of 100,000 shots and uh, in combination with the TDDB stress test and what we showed there, that we have the highest level of avalanche capability in mm -hmm. repeated test. Yeah? Uh, hard to explain it without any PowerPoint, yeah, um, yeah. So, but um, just uh, trust in me. Short circuit wisdom time, we are on the level of uh, three microseconds typically, but we can also show how we can increase that, which, which is an important point compared to IGBT technologies. Um, so we can easily bring that up to whatever, five or 10 microseconds or so. Um, and I think that are the most important points. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, that's some great insights into microchip there. So thank you very much for your time and uh, enjoy the rest of the show. Yeah, thank you very much for the interview yeah. and uh, for listening. And thank you very much. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye.